Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us. We're going to have a conversation with Dr. Darius Francescati. He's a breast surgeon with the Rush University Medical Center. Uh, thank you for joining the program, doctor. Well, thank you for the invitation. I did say that you were a breast surgeon. A bit of background about yourself and uh, your role there at Rush University Medical Center. Well, my background uh, does include an interest in breast imaging in both ultrasound and mammography. Mm -hmm. I have actually done a lot of offline education in the area by studying with uh, Laszlo Tabar, who is a renowned mammographic uh, teacher, uh, world known, and also uh, my interests lie in breast ultrasound as well. And I studied with a couple of gentlemen. One of them is Michelle Tabull, the innovator who introduced ductal breast echography, and his uh, close associate, uh, Dominic Amy. I've also had teaching responsibilities with the American College of Surgeons and, uh, during their clinical congresses, and I've acted as both as chair of courses entitled or topics related to mammography for general surgeons as well as breast imaging for general surgeons. So needless to say, you are well-versed in the area of uh, imaging in, in all its uh, aspects as it relates to breast and, and breast cancer. How many women are affected in the United States? Well, I think if you look at the statistics, there are roughly 250,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed in the United States yearly. Uh, that doesn't include roughly 50 to 60,000 cases of ductal carcinoma in situ. Both of these cancers will require surgical treatment. Is a lumpectomy the go-to? Is that the first surgical treatment that is, is normally performed? How effective is a lumpectomy? Well, if you equate a lumpectomy with a mastectomy for survival rates, there's essentially uh, no difference, which I think means that women who have a cancer that is amenable to having a lumpectomy, which is essentially a small partial mastectomy, just a, a small area of the breast is removed, uh, the, the option for a lumpectomy should certainly uh, be present uh, on the initial, you know, conference with uh, with the breast surgeon. Once that consultation takes place and uh, the patient decides to undergo a lumpectomy, how often does the surgeon have to go back and uh, do more surgery? Well, that that is problematic. And the fact of the matter is, is that if you look at statistics across the country, mm -hmm. the reported positive margin rates vary from zero to 70 to 100%. That means that in that category, women who are presented with uh, a positive margin have to make a choice at that time of either undergoing another re-excision uh, to find negative margins on pathology or opt for a mastectomy. So how does imaging play a role in I guess, enhancing the effectiveness of a lumpectomy at the outset? Well, I think that imaging has a great deal to do with the ability for a surgeon to obtain negative margins on the initial operation. And if we look at the means that are given to surgeons to examine the tissue in the operating room, Right now, they are uh, multiple and varied. It's almost as if uh, uh, there needs to be a solution to all the intraoperative analytic methods that we use in looking for a suspect positive margin. And the options that we obviously have today are many and varied. They include ultrasound assessment, of those um, margins in the operating room, mm -hmm. but that's dependent on 
the ability to identify the anatomy and the density of tissue. Uh, calcifications, unfortunately, are presently not identifiable, and, and calcifications are really a very important index of perhaps a positive margin. Unfortunately, today, uh, surgeons will uh, just look for the clip placement as a guide to ascertaining whether or not they've got, quote unquote, the suspect area. And unfortunately, the clip, which is used after uh, getting into tissue biopsy, uh, has, you know, uh, problems. It can drift. It can. It cannot be quite directly placed, so that using either identification of the clip or calcifications under ultrasound, for instance, is imperfect. That's so, one way that we analyze uh, the the tissue in the operating room. There are a couple of others. Uh, the Mozart system is a uh, X-ray system that has been developed that allows a 3D analysis of the tissue in question. What it does provide is the ability to actually use a plane by plane analysis of the suspect area for the surgeon to visualize in the operating room. It not only identifies calcifications, but it allows the surgeon to analyze for density, uh, which is a, the telltale mark of many, many cancers. And this is where uh, the imaging aspect, the ability to identify the mammographic hallmarks of pathology are most important. Unfortunately, I don't think that surgeons today have actually been introduced adequately to the analysis of either the anatomic image or the ultrasound image and the information that's available to it. So in looking at a 3D image, far surpasses the ability to analyze a specimen in a two-dimensional way. Uh, the two can't be equated. There's no way that you can change a 2D uh, image uh, and flip it on its side or look at it from two different aspects and actually have the ability to go plane by plane through a, a specimen looking at a one millimeter slice from the very top to the very bottom of the specimen. So I think it's a, a, a tremendous improvement and is, the, is today what I consider the best possible way that we have right now for the analysis of uh, the breast specimen in the operating room done by the surgeon. You mentioned that um, surgeons haven't been introduced to uh, this and other technologies. Who developed the uh, the Mozart system, and where can we go online and get some more information about this uh, 3D imaging system? The only company that uh, presently has 3D specimen analysis in the operating room is CubTech. So I think if you just look up CubTech on Google, uh, you'll be able to... Uh, find out information related to that technology. Dr. Francis Gatti, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com. Health Professional Radio.